I want to talk today about uh, Psalm 50 and 51. <clears throat> the Lord's kind of showed me this ark that I don't, I don't know if anybody's ever seen before across the Psalms, about 30 of the Psalms, where it's kind of a training program back and forth of the remnant, the daughter of Zion, the, and her virgin companions, as they're getting trained up and broken and, and crushed and whatever, and then <clears throat> at a certain point in this training program, they think they know what to preach. Psalm 49, they're preaching about money and how not to trust in money and whatever. And then the Lord says, mm, yeah, no, that's not the sermon I want you to preach. This is the sermon I want you to preach. And the Lord speaks from Zion in Psalm 50. And in Psalm 51, the remnant um, responds to this sermon that the Lord just preached. And they thought they were pretty holy, but when he preached this sermon, it scares the pants off of them. And I'm sure that I can't do it justice uh, sitting here, but uh, I do want to read this to you and have you consider uh, Psalm 50 and what the Lord has to say. Psalm 50, the mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Okay? Do you get a sense of how big he is? Have you seen the satellite pictures for Hurricane Ike that's like the size of Texas? That, that took that the whole Gulf of Mexico was this Hurricane Ike? Do you understand that the tempest that surrounds God, who Ike is a little teeny little, okay, big, big God, big God, okay. Then the Lord speaks. He says, gather to me my consecrated ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is the remnant. This is the righteous remnant. He's saying, bring them up here. I want to talk to them. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God himself is judge. So the quote was, gather to me my consecrated ones. And then the Lord speaks, hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal in the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains, and the creatures of the field are mine. He knows every bird. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bloods or drink the blood of goats? No. Okay, that's the, okay. Now, verse 14 and 15. This is where he says, this is what I want. Okay, to the righteous remnant, he's saying, your sacrifices are nice. Don't really want the bulls and the goats. This is what I want. Sacrifice thanks offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. That's it. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. Pretty simple. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? Okay, who's the wicked he's talking about here? The false shepherds, the priests, the, the, the clergy class that's, that's destroying the people? Oh, yeah. The world, well, yeah. But mostly, he's mad at the priests. He's mad at the children of Israel that aren't obeying. So he's talking about the wicked in Israel. Not the wicked, the Moabites and Edomites and whatever. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. When you see a thief, you join with him. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. 
You speak continually against your brother. That's like denominationalism and like faction, division, dissension, envy, selfish lust, acts of the sinful nature, Galatians 5, 19, 21, will not inherit the kingdom of God. You speak continually against your brother and slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and accuse you to your face. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with none to rescue. He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me, and, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. He's saying, you guys, you wicked, look to the remnant that sacrifices thank offerings. He's preparing the way for you, and I'm going to honor him. But you, I'm going to cut into pieces because of your pointing finger, malicious talk, and all this other stuff. Now the remnant, they hear the Lord preach this sermon, and it scares them because they thought they were kind of shiny. But they hit their face, and they say, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. They're like, ah, oh, we ain't clean enough. We can't go. We're not clean enough. Don't tell us to go back and preach that sermon. We can't. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. They're like, I don't, have, I don't have wisdom in the inner parts. I don't have, I, I can't do this. Cl please, you have to. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. They know he crushed them, Psalm 44. They know he crushed them. But they're like, we can't go, we can't do this. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Burn it all away. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Okay, I can't go do this until you do this to me. You're going to have to do something to me. You're going to have to burn this out. You're going to have to kill me, crush me, whatever. Fill me fix me because I cannot go like this. I am not clean enough to preach that sermon to people. And they beg and they plead and they say, Lord, I, I'm dirt. I'm a worm. Do something. And if you don't, I can't go. But when you do, then I will teach transgressors your ways and they will turn back. Verse 14, save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. If you clean me off, then I'll be able to sing and really mean it. O oh Lord, open my lips. You open my mouth, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight. We get it. We get it. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Finally, they understand it. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices whole burnt offerings, whole people completely laid on the altar, surrendering all. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Okay, And they know this isn't, he just said, I don't want bulls. But, but he wants people. He wants the whole, complete sacrifice, all. I surrender all. Lay it all on the altar. Blank check, nothing held back. Here it is. You got me. Do whatever you want with me. But don't leave me like this. Wash me down. Clean me out. Get it all out. Purge me. Because I can't go like this. I'm not clean enough to preach what you want preached. And that's the cry of the remnant. And that's the sermon I think he wants preached. Sacrifice thank offerings to the Lord. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. Call upon Him in the day of trouble. And He will rescue you. And you will honor Him. This is the day of trouble. We're walking into lots and lots of trouble. If you're in Texas, you know this is the day of trouble. Other places. Orissa province in India, the Christians there are getting slaughtered. Didn't even do anything. What's the solution? Thank him. Do what you promised. And he'll honor it. And he'll rescue you.